Hey everyone, welcome to Radius Church. We are so happy to have you at Church Online. If this is your first time, let me just give you a little bit of information before we get into the service today. The first thing you need to know is our connection card. Right now we're not uh, here in person, but you can fill one out online. So if you go to our website, it's radiuschurch.tv, go to the Connect tab, you can fill out the connection card online. That way you'll know all the different things coming up. You know, there's a lot of changes, a lot of different things going on in our state right now. Uh, so you will stay up to date with all that information. Every week we send you an email with things going on and also message notes so that you can follow along in the message. Man, we've been so just thankful and appreciative of your faithfulness in giving during this season. I can't thank you guys enough for, for that. Um, for those of you that haven't given but would like to bring your tithes and offerings, you can do that online. Um, there's three easy ways to give. You can go to our website. It's radiuschurch.tv. You can go on our app and give that way. Or you can also mail it to us, and we will put the address on the screen for your convenience. Uh, Ken's on part number seven of a series called Wisdom. It's the final part, and you are in for a treat. Uh, so here we go, part number seven of Wisdom. Well, welcome everybody watching online. And uh, for the first time in almost four months, I have some a live crowd here. So let those online hear you, everybody. Come on now. All right. <laughs> we have... Uh, we have our, uh, some of our dream team here. Uh, I, I don't even know how many we have, 20 people here. Uh, 20 people here from our dream team just to uh, help a brother out. And uh, so we're on Wise Dumb part number seven. I don't know what order you've been watching it on, but we are, at, when we're live here uh, doing Wise Dumb, Wisdom part number seven. And I'm going to wrap it up, and there's so many little things that I wanted to dive into that I'm leaving behind. I really wanted to talk about the principle of guarding your heart out of Proverbs, which is one of my favorites, Proverbs chapter number four, verse number 23. But I made a whole series out of that that'll come at a later time. And, uh, and so, but I could not close up the book of Proverbs. I just could not do it without considering the ant. Has anybody bet, read about the ant in Proverbs? Come on. I just couldn't do it. I mean, the ant kept making an appearance, literally and figuratively. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, and, and I just felt like, man, we have to go back. The, the real Proverbs, the real nuggets that Solomon starts dropping don't really start until Proverbs 10. Ver, chapter 1 through 9 is all, a, all the case that he's making why we need these Proverbs, if that makes any sense, okay? He's telling us to get wisdom. He's telling us about the fool. He's telling us about, uh, you, you know, just all of that, the scoffer. Um, and, and so, but I had to go back, and I just could not wrap up Proverbs without considering the ant. Because Proverbs tells us to consider the ant, right? So let's go to it. Come on, here it is right here, Proverbs 6, 6 and through 8. It says, go to the ant. <laughs> and then I kind of like this. I, Solomon, it's like he's having a, like a little bit of an attitude or something. He's like, go to the ant, you sluggard. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know. It, maybe he was tweeting or something. All right. Go to the ant, you sluggard. I'm going to get a lot of Facebook digs in, okay, everybody, just so you know. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. I want you to really check those, those red words out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define them because I think they really have some importance to us. And then it says, He has no commander and he has no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. Uh, a lot there, but let's break down a couple of words. First of all, it says, go to the ant. Uh, I, I actually should have highlighted the word go. I accidentally highlighted the word ant. But, but the word go, let me give you the definition as it was written in the original. The word go means to walk with. Now, I don't know how you guys are, and I can't see if you're smiling or not, but here's what I do know. Can you imagine with me, it, you're not taking your dog on a walk, but it's like, come on, let me take my pet ant on a walk, you know? It's like, because that's what it means. Go means to walk with. So Solomon is saying, walk with the ant. Usually when you're walking with somebody, you're learning something about them, right? So he says, go to the ant. And then he says, consider, and the word consider means to watch it. 
So he wants us to go to the ant. He wants us to walk with the ant, and he wants us to watch the ant. And then he says, because you, from that is where you'll get wisdom. So let me paraphrase with those meanings in, in, uh, being understood. He says, walk with the ant and watch the way it lives, and you will be wise. I think I have that. Walk with the ant and watch the way it lives, and you will be wise. So it's very difficult to wrap up Proverbs without... Come on, let's do a little ant walk in here, right? Okay, so now, I don't know about you, but when I read that, like, be like the ant, I don't want to be like the ant. Uh, Ants get squished, you know? Uh, Ants have raid attack them. And I I just, there's a lot of other things I would rather be than an ant. Can I get an amen out there, right? I mean, I like the Bible verses that talk about being like strong as a lion. Come on, somebody. If you didn't have your mask on, I'd ask you to roar with me, but I won't get that carried away. I like the verses that say, mount up with wings as eagles. But nobody's saying, oh, I'm a follower of Christ. I'm just like an ant. I mean, nobody really talks like that, right? I don't want to be an ant. And, but watch this. The ant is a little thing with a loud message. And I'm not so sure that's where the wisdom lies. A little thing. Have you felt insignificant lately? I don't know about you, but I'll just tell you my battle. I haven't seen nobody hardly in months. I've wondered if people are even out there paying attention. Oh, I know the numbers are there, but they're cleaning garages and cleaning kitchens and cooking breakfast and drinking coffee and out on the boat. I have never felt more like an ant than I have in the last three months. And, but it's a little thing with a loud message. And, and this is no kidding. I'm not making this up just to make the message make more power or more sense. No kidding. When I sat down to write this message, this is how far I had written. I am not kidding you one bit. No stretch of the conversation. An ant crawled across my computer screen <laughs> while I was writing this. And, uh, and, and, and now, uh, I did the ant's funeral. I just want you to know. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he was a good ant. I, I preached him into heaven. Uh, and I, it, it, but, but anyway, uh, but it's true. The funeral part's not true, but an ant did crawl across, and his demise is true also, okay? Uh, but, but, but maybe God has some wisdom, right? Uh, maybe God has some wisdom for us in the ant because he said, consider the ant. I want to give you four things tonight, and uh, we'll, we'll see what, how God speaks to you through it. Um, so let's do exactly what Solomon said. Let's consider the ant, and let's consider these things about the ant. Number one is I want you to consider with me the power of the ant. Anybody old enough to remember Adam Ant, the little cartoon? Come on now, right? Okay, uh, the power of the ant. Out of all the animal kingdom, out of all the bug kingdom, the ant seems like the most unlikely to succeed. It's like, you know, I didn't make its picture in the yearbook, like, most likely to succeed. There's the ant, right? Um, And and I just want to ask the question again to all of you watching online and to those of you that are in the room. Have you ever felt like the ant? Have you ever felt insignificant? Have you ever felt like your voice mattered, didn't matter? Have you ever felt like my talents don't really add up to anything? Have you ever just felt like, and I don't know where everybody else is at, but I'll pick on me. In the last few months, there's been... More than one time where I thought, hmm, is what I do really even, does it really even matter? Does does, does Radius Church, does it really matter? If it was one of the 100,000 in America that closed down, would it really matter? I feel sometimes like the ant. But wait a minute. Before you get too bummed out and before you get too discouraged, that might be the very place that its power lies is in this feeling of being small. In other words, let me say it this way. The ant's not trying to be a big shot. The ant's not going around trying to be something it's not. The ant's not trying to show off. Now, the lion tries to show off. Come on now. Have you seen Lion King? Right? The, The eagle. We have an eagle that lives in a tree right by our house. I mean, that thing shows off every day. But the ant is not down on the ground saying, hey, look at me, check me out. Well, look at what I'm doing. Look at this colony I have built. 
The ant is not, the ant is small, it's insignificant, and that, I believe, is where the wisdom is. And here's why, because remember, God said this, that God resists the proud and exalts the ant. I mean, sorry, exalts the humble, exalts the small, exalts the David, exalts the, come on. I thank you for nodding your head, because I can't hear your amens under those muffled things. Okay, now this is just trivia for a second. It's kind of interesting. There's about 10,000 different species of ants. Who knew? <laughs> All right? <laughs> Until you get them in your house. Okay, so there's like 10,000 different species of ants. They're grouped together in eight different categories. I know, I geeked out on this way farther than I should have, all right? Okay, Uh, but I just want to consider one of the eight, all right? Just hang with me, everybody. Just let me consider one of the eight different, um, different categories of them. And this one is called the harvester ant. Now, I want you to walk with me through this, and I'm just going to give you some characteristics. The harvester ant, he eats seed, he eats kernel, he eats flowers, he eats fruit, and he eats other bugs, and he chews it, much like a cow just chews its cud. And so an ant just chews it and make what scientists call ant bread. I'm not making this up. Makes this stuff called ant bread. And, and so they chew it up into this pulp called ant bread, and then they live mostly off what we would call sugar water. Hang with me here. The sugar water... Or another name might be honeydew, or the dew of the grass and the flowers that's mixed with pollen that has, to the ant, a sweet taste to it. So it lives off ant bread and honeydew. Come on, does anybody know any Bible typology in the room? Mm -mm. Let me drop the bomb on you then, all right? Now, first of all, the honeydew is what energizes the ant, and the ant, the harvester ant, can lift 50 times its weight. Anybody wouldn't mind doing that? Not physically, emotionally. I wish I could lift way more than the hurts and the harms and the pains that have been. Come on now. Um, Okay, so let's do just a tiny bit of Bible typology, okay? If you know Bible typology, honey, do. Do is a symbol, anybody know, of the Holy Spirit. Do is a symbol. There, there's over, I, I can't remember, I studied the symbols of the Holy Spirit once, and there's, I can't remember, and I don't want to say because somebody will email me and say, you're a liar, all right? So, uh, but there's a lot, okay? And, and so do is a picture of the Holy Spirit. The ant feasts on or fills up with power that is greater than him. Come on, hold that thought. And the ant also, so consider the ant, because the ant also is eating bread. And bread is a symbol of Jesus, our daily bread. Jesus, the manna down from heaven, our daily, okay, so you got that. Okay, so let me just make a conclusion real quick. If we would feed on the bread of heaven, not the bread of Facebook, not the bread of news, come on somebody. If we would feed on the words of Jesus... Verily I say unto you, come on, if we would feast on, come unto me, all of you who are heavy laden. If we would feast on, peace be with you. If we would feast on, oh, you of little faith. If we would feast on the red letters of Jesus and we would feast more on the bread of heaven than we do on our daily news, we might have more strength to lift a whole lot more than we think we could live. Come on, somebody. And if we would take some time to allow His Holy Spirit to fill our lives so we are no longer battling through corona or any other thing with our own strength. I don't know about you, my own strength ran out like 10 days into the coronavirus. I need something bigger than me. I need wisdom bigger than me. I need power bigger than me. I'm going to use a church word here, so hold on. I need anointing bigger than me. I need the do, the 
honeydew, the power of the Holy Spirit inside. The same power that rose Jesus out of the grave is the same power that lives in me. And the prophet Zechariah said, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. I'm not going to get through this bad season or any other bad season based on my knowledge, my ability, who goes to the White House next, who goes to the State House next. Come on, somebody. We're going to get through this by feasting on the bread and the honeydew of heaven. Can I get an amen? Amen. Right, everybody? And, and watch this. The ant can lift all that. Has anybody felt burdened down during this? And you can lie and say no, or you can be way more spiritual than me because there's been times I'm like, man, this is heavy. You do some funerals in a shutdown, it's heavy. You have a sick parent that you can't go see, it's heavy. You have friends crying that started a business a year ago and are out of business and bankrupt. It's heavy. Yes, we love Jesus. Yes, we're going to heaven. But I need some power to be able to hold way more than what my natural person, come on. Yeah. Number two. Number two. Number two. Not only do we look at the power of the ant, but I want you to consider the preparation of the ant. And the preparation of the ant, uh, I I love this. This one's kind of a gimme here. It says, notice the ant prepares for the winter time. He's working not, watch, this is so clue. He's not working for today. He's ignoring the issues of today Woo, come on. Bring it on, coronavirus. He is, he is overlooking the the emotional roller coaster of the present because he's got his eyes focused on something in the future. Now, the obvious right there is for me to talk to people right now, whether you're listening online or you're in this room, the obvious right there is to say, use your today, use your spring, which is the birthing time of your life, use your summer, which are the productive years of your life, use the fall, which is the retirement ages of your life, so that you're ready for death, the winter of your life. That would be the real easy way to go. But I'd like to look at it just a little bit different. I'd like us to consider that that the ant's greatest concern is not where he is, but where he's going. I think the thing that's wearing everybody out is we are fixated on where we are. It's one of the reasons I said in the beginning that I've got to make sure, and there's been times I haven't done good at it. There's been times that, wait a minute, I have time out. I've watched way too much news today. Anybody else? And, and i got to turn that off because that's about today. And today we can't gather. And, and today there was a time. Today we can't go to the store. And today we can't go to our jobs. But all today is about preparing us for something else. I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Jonah, he had a stop too in the belly of a well. He had a shutdown also, but that prepared him for something else. Paul had a shutdown in a prison, and and he was isolated too, but it prepared him for something else. So what is today? My question as a pastor that I have to ask before I ask, what does it do for Ken? I have to ask, what does this shutdown mean today? What does it mean for us as a church as we move forward? Um, I think we're just now starting to discover some possibilities of that, that this season is preparing us for something. Remember uh, a few months before the shutdown, I did a series called, uh, I think it was just called Pain. Um, Even if you don't remember, would you nod your heads and make me feel better? You can cross your fingers under your chair, but just make me feel good, all right? Um, And I talked about how promotion is always preceded by pain. I think the same thing applies right now. I think that the church is getting ready to see some of its greatest days. But there's a little bit of pain and discomfort prior to... Come on, ask any mama in the room if I'm not right. Yeah, come on now. Uh, This is our time to prepare. The ant is never looking in the past. He's always looking in the future. And I believe somebody watching this weekend, somebody sitting in this room, come on, you need this piece of wisdom right now. Because you don't trust your now because of what happened yesterday. And because of what happened yesterday is messing up your now. And your now 
is not a good foundation for what you're trying to build for tomorrow. Consider the ant. Walk with the ant. Do what it does. And let your now prepare you for tomorrow. Come on now. Some, of, some people, you're continually putting people on promotion that are, will be friends that will promote you and help you in life. But because you've been hurt by some pastor, some man, some woman, some abuser, some boss, some uh, just keep going. Now I don't trust any man. Now I don't trust any woman. Now I don't trust any church. Now I don't trust any leader. Now I don't trust any job because of what happened back there, and you're still looking back there, and it's messing your now, which is destroying your future. Consider the ant. He's not worried about yesterday. He's not even really consumed in today, only to leverage today for what the harvest tomorrow could bring. Whew, that's a good place for an amen right there, if I have to say so myself. Matter of fact, I think that's biblical. This present suffering cannot be compared to the future glory, come on, that God has in store for us. Yes, yes. And, and it's kind of like, uh, and I'll go to the next point, but it's kind of like, you know, uh, two and a half years ago, we launched uh, Radius Church right here in this room. And, and there's many people that have helped us do that. Some right here in this room. Well, everybody, really. Um, but there were people before we opened the doors that came along and prayed with us and started financially giving and jumped on a dream team. And so the day we opened the doors, man, we had 50 people in on the dream team. We had sound systems and chairs and buildings leased and paid for before we ever opened the door. Because church planters are planting seeds, watch this, that some may never enjoy the shade from the tree, from the seed that they plant. Consider the ant. Because we're planting seeds right now that it might be our grandchildren that sit under its shade. This might be a safe harbor for your children. Oh, man, come on, everybody. Consider the ant. The preparation of the ant. And i got to hurry up. All right, number three is I want to talk to you about the priority of the ant. Now, this is the only point that's going to have some sub-points, all right? Uh, the, the, so there's going to be some sub-points under the priority of the ant because his priorities are his habitation, his hearing, his harmony, and his harvest, all right? Come on, man. I got a lot of free time. I'm making all them words start with the same letter, all right? So here we go. That's a lie. I really don't have as much free time as I thought I was going to have. All right, so here we go. Let's talk about its habitation. Now, lean into these. These are, I think these are the most important. It's habitation. It's important to know that the ant is a social insect. Woo! Come on. Remember that ant I squished? He was alone. Now, if he had had a hundred of his buddies with him, I'd have given them my computer. Just here you go. (laughs) Right? They're they're social insects. They're they're probably all about, I bet every ant in a colony attends a life group. Come on, Mark. (laughs) And when there's sickness in the colony, I bet they Zoom call one another. I, I, because ants are social, they do life together. I think they, I, I, I believe, uh, they believe in teamwork. I, I think they would be on the dream team. In fact, I think they created the dream team, and every ant in the colony is on the dream team. There's no spectators in the ant colony. Consider the ant. There's nobody sitting down on the sideline. Way, way to lift that cornbread muffin. No, they're all up under that thing. Consider the ant. Watch its ways. Oh, man. Um, And I'll just say it again. Ants do not survive independently. They don't. Um, And uh, they're small. They're vulnerable. They're alone. When they're alone. Um, When I stay humble, when I get over my ego... Would it be okay if I said, when we get over our ego and we realize we're vulnerable, alone? I know, Ken, that's why we want to come to church. Well, the church is bigger than a building. The sanctuary, listen to me. Some of you have a sanctuary in your living room that's not being used. 
Dads, some of you are supposed to be the priest of your home, but you're waiting for church to come back together. Come on now. I'm not supposed to be your kid's pastor. You're supposed to be your kid's pastor. Hello? Okay, I, I, I like you. I love you. It's all good. All right. Um, all right, let's, let's move on to another one. It's hearing. So we got his habitation. We got his hearing. Man, here's something else I geeked out about. It was fascinating. Ants make these little sounds. Have you ever seen one ant crawling through? He, he's, the, he's the searching ant. And if he finds a crumb, he will send a signal, a verbal sound, a, a, a wavelength to the ant colony. Drop a potato chip on the floor. Watch one ant come find it. You get up the next morning. There's an army of ants. Here we go, carrying the, because he, he has a voice, and all the other ants are listening for the voice, listening for the discovery. Oh, man, I want to get into this. Woo! He, they're, they're waiting for new opportunities. They're, they're watching and waiting. Isn't it interesting during this time, everybody's got a mouth. I mean, everybody's got a voice. But I wonder, does anybody have an ear? Because John the Revelator said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And I, I think the devil has us so distracted by the news and by the, the riots and by the, I could name all the political junk that is going on and all the Facebook, oh, look what he said, and oh, look what they said. And we got, we got a lot of voices, but is anybody listening? Because maybe God has sent us And he's got, hey, guys, I got a great harvest. But we're too busy saying, oh, I don't believe that. I'm not going to wear a mask. Come on, can we just put the simple things aside and let's keep the main things the main things. Come on, everybody, right? And and, and I'll I'll just admit, I know I'm I'm sounding a little little irritated. That's because I got a live crowd here, and they got me fired up. So email them. Email them. Mark Evans at gmail.com. All right. I know I've gotten distracted by COVID news and all the stuff that goes with it. The COVID conversation, the COVID complaints, the, I mean, come on, you could just fill about anything in there right now. I think we're right now ready to fight about anything that comes up. Anyway, let's talk about its harmony. It's harmony. Oh, come on. It's, it's, it's harmony. They, they, they accomplish great things by working together. You never see one ant carrying a Dorito chip by himself. Um, you ever seen a group of ants carrying a potato chip? Come on. I mean, it's, it's kind of amazing. I mean, they got all them ants under there. Come on. They're all marching in, doing, they're all heading the same direction. They all have the same purpose. They all have the same, come on, consider the ant. Consider its ways. I would love my people to get in harmony, all marching the same way, keeping the main thing the main thing. Hmm. They, they live in organized colonies, uh, which I think is interesting. Let me just give you a verse on this one, and I'll go to the last one. Psalms 133, 1 says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. I, I double-dog dare you, get in a concordance, go to Bible Gateway or Google, unity, harmony in the Scriptures. And there are so many verses that talk about how much it blesses God when His people are all carrying the potato chip together. We got a crazy world right now. That's my potato chip. That's not a potato chip. If you're going to pick up that potato chip, you better wear a mask. I'm mad at you for wearing a mask. I mean, come on now. I think right now, have we failed the unity tests? And I think God's ready to move in a powerful way to those that will say, you know what, let's set all that white noise aside and let's get together up under this chip and do something for God. Woo, I feel that one right there. All right. Sometimes you just got to encourage yourself. Way to go, Ken. That's good. Love that. That's a good. I like that. Uh, and then let me do the last one of those sub points. And the last one is its harvest. 
Check this out. If you've ever watched an ant carry a crumb, <laughs> you can tell, I grew up in homes that weren't in the best neighborhood, so we had all kind of bugs crawling around our house. Ants, roaches, I mean, we did. You know, the South, there's bugs. Anybody ever lived in the South? I mean, you turn on the lights and you hear, they're gone. And you watch an ant carry a crumb that's bigger than him, that ant will pull it, drag it, scratch it. You know, that, that ant is doing everything because there's a great harvest to be had. Um, I think there's a great harvest to be had that if we're not careful, there's this great harvest and opportunity in front of us, but we're too distracted by... I, I've done it. There's been times in this, if I'm being very transparent, where, oh, man, I, I, I let anxiety, I let worry, I let opinion, I let... A lot of other things. Wait, wait, i got to set that aside because there's something big getting ready to happen. And i got to make sure I let all that go to the wayside. Just think another day. Let me give you a little hint. This just, um, uh, um, what if we did church different? What if we weren't supposed to return to normal? What if the greatest harvest, if you always do what you've always done, You'll always get what you've always had. And what if it's time? What if we're in a season that we've worshiped around the shrine of normal for too long and God is saying, Look, you've gotten this big of a harvest doing it the way you're doing it, but I'm going to use this season in the world's history, not Washington's history, in the world. I'm going to do something over the whole globe or uh, I would I sh- got to be careful because I'm not my theology is not that God created it, but I'm going to leverage that thing, and I got a I have a bigger harvest than you could ever imagine. So what if just imagine with me, all right? Let me stretch your imaginations. What if we didn't come back to church like normal? For some people, that freaks them out because we worship our church. Do I dare say it? You want me to say it, AJ? A lot of times in American Christianity, we have worshipped our church more than we have worshipped our God. We have worshipped His bride more than we have worshipped Him. We have worshipped our pastors and our celebrity pastors and our styles and our personalities and our systems and our lights and our bands more than we have worshipped God. But I think there's this verse somewhere in there that says, I will have no other gods before me. Even good gods. Even gods that look good. Even gods that wear crosses around their neck. Hello, somebody. What, just imagine with me. What if God is wanting to do something? What if Corona shutdown looks kind of like this for three more months, four more months, five more months? What if it does? I'm not trying to be a prophet of doom. I'm just trying to say, what, wait a minute. What if, we, what if this whole rest of this year, we don't get back to what we know life as is in normal? then do we just keep on going this way? Well, what, what if there's another way? What if Friday night, let's just, let's just pretend for a minute. What if Friday night, I mean, come on, the Tonight Show does it. Saturday Night Live does it. News talk shows do it. What if Friday night became the place that instead of this being a sanctuary, this became a studio? And I get up and preach a message. And then we open the church on Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And we open a barn or a garage or a living room or a virtual room. And there's virtual pastors doing watch parties. There's physical pastors here on a Monday night. There's physical pastors pastoring in their backyard. I was talking to Tyler, Tyler Beidelman, way to go. Him and his wife, Debbie, they are watching the message live on Sunday morning in their neighborhood, garage door open, big screen TV playing, and their, their whole neighborhood is watching the message. Now, isn't that what the church is supposed to be doing? What if we just leverage one guy speaking instead of one guy having to care for everybody What if we all started carrying the potato chip? What if church just looks different? 
You're watching it online on a computer. Yeah, but that doesn't solve the social part. Exactly. So what if 10 people gathered here on a Monday night, watched a message, and then discussed it? Because we don't discuss it on the weekends. What if 12 people, which you've been doing, gathering in Mark and Susan's barn on Saturday night when it's going live, and they watch it, and they get a chance to discuss it? What if all of a sudden, instead of one lead pastor, we had 30 lead pastors at Radius? It's harvest. We have to at least consider it. You know why? Because he said, consider the ant. He said, let me do the last point. Are you guys smiling at me? Okay, just making sure. I don't know. It was, at first it was nervous just talking to cameras. Now it's nervous speaking to a bunch of bank robbers. I mean, it's, it's just a little freaky. I'm just telling you. All right. I'm sorry. A bunch of doctors. Thank you, Jesus. All right, here we go. Here's the last one. Number four is the purity of the ant, the purity of the ant. And I'll wrap this one up close. But this was fascinating to me. Again, geeked out on this a little bit. Cleanliness is a priority to an ant. Come on, isn't that, that's kind of fascinating, isn't it? Um, so, so I got to thinking, the ant has, oh, I hope you hear this. The ant has the ability to get in the ditches and the dirt and the debris, and the filth, and stay clean. See, I think for too long we've tried to keep church clean, but real church is messy. Can I get in the mess and stay clean? Woo, come on. It goes to dirty places to get a big harvest. <laughs> Do you know, if we did the idea I just talked about, the Friday night kind of thing, and open it up, do you know how messy that is? That's a whole lot messier than keeping everybody in one little room and me kind of getting around and saying, okay, here's what we're going to do. Instead of, I don't know what they're doing over at AJ's house. Those are maniacs over there. Missy's involved. You know it's out of control. They have the ability to get in the dirt of the harvest and stay clean. Wow, the purity of the ant. Um, And by the way, it stays clean with the uh, it stays clean with the assistance of the other ants. That's kind of fascinating. This gets a little weird, but you can read it. You can Google it. Other ants will comb it and brush it and clean it and help him stay clean in the middle of messy situations. We're not supposed to do life alone. I, impl- I ask you with everything in me, if all you do is tune in on the weekends, take the next step. I double dog dare you. If you're lonely right now and you've just been watching online, which is about all we can do, I dare you. if you get in a life group at Radish, you don't have to stay in it for the rest of your life. If, if you're lonely, do one Zoom call. Just, just pick one. Put all the life groups on a chart, spin the tail of the, on the, pin the tail on the donkey, and call that one and say, I'm with you today. And just have a conversation. Let somebody pray with you virtually, online. Build relationships. And then one day we're going to come back together, and you're going to meet face to face. You might be missing one of the greatest friends in your life right now that will help you with the greatest harvest in your life right now. I, I, it's all I can do is provide you a way to build a colony that I think has a great harvest in store. Amen, everybody? I'm going to close right there. How would I do on my time? I think I did all right. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me talk to those of you online for just a moment, and then I'll come back and talk with you. If you're watching this message online, whether you're watching it live or you've picked it up some other time, You know, we talk about the power of an ant colony, and the book of Proverbs tells us to be like the ant. Get involved in in something that's bigger than you. And if you're watching and that resonated with you and you're not a follower of Christ, I want to give you that opportunity. I'm going to say a prayer, and no matter where you're at, you might be watching this in your garage, in your living room. It might be playing on your app as you're driving down the road, but I want to pray a prayer. And if the Holy Spirit just brings this into your, this is you right now, and say, man, I want to be in that colony. Let me say it another way, because that sounds a little spooky. I want to be in the family of God. I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to discover God's plans and purposes for my life. There's a harvest. There's a potato chip. 
There's a goal. There's a dream I'd like to realize. But my friends, you're never going to do that all by yourself. And so today might be the day. You might have tuned into this. You might have showed up here because today's your day. Say, you know what? Enough of doing life alone. I'm ready to become a follower of Christ. So I want to pray this prayer, even in this room with heads bowed and eyes closed. Father God, I thank you for Jesus. I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. Come into my life and be my Lord, and my Savior, and my best friend. From this day forward, I'm going to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're watching online and you said that prayer, if you're at RadiusChurch.tv, you can just click right down there. There's a little hand symbol that says, I'm, I prayed that prayer today. If you'll click that, it'll lead you through a series of things where we could connect with you and help you walk through that. If you happen to be watching on Facebook, connect with the person that started the watch party that you're on. If you just accidentally showed up to Radius Church Facebook, then just let us know. You can email us at Radius Church. Uh, we will walk you through that. If you just want to remain uh, kind of private right now about it, that's okay too. But we'd love to get on the journey with you. There's a little connection card you can fill out virtually on our webpage. We'd love to connect with you. God bless you. Thanks for watching today. Can we all just give the Lord a good hand clap, everybody?